Davo is Nyame and Vara's oldest son, but they have had no news of him for many years. He and his wife decided to leave the forest, attracted by money and the oil companies. He has still not been able to adapt to this new way of life, and he feels lost between two worlds. His only escape is alcohol. I thought it was coming to paradise. My friends, the timber merchants, told me stories about the oil companies. They convinced me to come here to work, saying I would earn a lot of money. But I didn't, and now I regret leaving the jungle. Every single day I think about how I used to hunt with my father and all my brothers, all of us naked. I was very happy. Now I realize that paradise is not this, but what I left behind. Now it's too late. Davo is not the only Urani who left the jungle. Many, like him, decided to start a new life and seek their fortunes, but a few have been able to adapt. Their culture has lost its identity and pride to such an extent that they've now become beggars in the midst of the wealth of their own territory. They beg for charity while their houses are built on enormous reserves of oil. The change is very pronounced. The old people have hidden their knowledge. They have hidden the way they are. And you need to spend time and energy getting to them and getting to know their real inner world, which is covered, blocked by the current meaning of civilization. Regarding the young people, they feel attracted to the concept of the city, modernism, radio, television. We, the Ecuadorians, and the world around us, all of us who are part of this planet, who are hungry for natural resources, hungry for oil, hungry for a series of nature's products, we have brought about this change. We are the ones who have made this happen through oil, wood and drug companies, and of course us, the consumers. The older members seem resigned, but what future lies ahead for the younger generations? I think the Warani are still in time to develop a protective strategy by means of two lines. Protection of the ancestral knowledge, but that goes hand in hand with protection of the forest. Supplying alternatives for them to become capable and to be able to enter into the modern world, but in a slower and safer way. Because within 50 years, they have had a change that goes from the stone to civilization to the computer. Many young Indian women have no alternative but to work in the many brothels on the outskirts of Koka, the town closest to the Warani territory. Koka lies on the left bank of the Napo River and is a typical city of the Amazon, remote and forgotten, a place of unplanned chaotic growth. At first sight the town looks poor but this could not be further from the truth. Money flows like water here. Brothels, bars, casinos, hotels and restaurants exist thanks to the petrol workers who spend months at a time isolated in the heart of the jungle. Then there are the timber merchants, the miners and the many soldiers who are here to protect the oil plants. There was no other access way to coca than coming by the river. We had to part from Quito to Ambatu and from Ambatu to Banyo, Skuyo, Tena and Sao Ail. We took the canoe from there and we came to Coca. We departed at about 11 a.m. and arrived at Coca at 4 or 5 p.m. It was the only way. Sometimes we did not arrive in Coca and we had to sleep at any point of the riverside in the house of some settler. 
Napo River divided two areas, the side of the native settlers who were here on the left hand, and on the right hand, all these lands from the Misaguayi to Nuevo Rocafuerte. That entire riverside belonged to the Aucas people. There was not a house, there was not a town along the whole route, because if anybody dared to pass, he risked to find death. Women were not often killed, they were taken to be raped, but men were killed. I remember that in that time, when we were here, the Aucas appeared naked on the other side of the river, and there was a small picket of soldiers, a squad, and we begged them to go and frighten the Aucas to fire into the air. But they always left. That is why we always lived without rest, because sometimes the Aucas managed to cross to this riverside.